Welcome to ISP Security Measures. ISPs are traditionally responsible for providing their customers with internet connectivity as well as hosting services such as email, web, and file transfer. However, these hosted services must not only be reliable and available, they must also be secure. Businesses that rely on the internet to generate revenue through ISP hosted online services must be able to assure their customers that private data will remain private and that networks are protected. This video presents some common tools that both ISPs and their customers can implement to secure their respective networks and services. You must know the information in this presentation because as a networker, you will be charged with the implementation of such security measures. Failure to use these measures at an ISP may result in compromised personal or business information. Some fundamental security best practices that can be implemented by both the ISP as well as their customers are applying patches and updates to applications and operating systems, using and scanning with current antivirus software, and using strong passwords. These three measures provide an affordable and easy to implement first line of defense against network threats. Measures must be implemented to assure that the data flowing over the network is secure. Encryption renders data unreadable while it travels over the network, even if it is intercepted by an attacker. Encryption is very important in situations where people are sending and receiving personal information such as account usernames and passwords and credit card numbers. Encryption is achieved through use of secure application protocols. These protocols should be used whenever sensitive data is placed on a network. Examples of secure protocols include HTTPS, which is a secure version of HTTP, FTPS, which provides secure file transfer services, and SSH, which provides secure terminal emulation. When secure communications must occur, these protocols should be used. If an application does not have a secure version of a protocol, IPSEC, which works at the network layer, can be used to encrypt any application layer of traffic. Firewalls are also used by ISPs. Firewalls, which can be implemented in hardware or software, are used to define which traffic can enter or leave a network. These devices can use many different technologies to define this traffic. These technologies include access control lists, or ACLs, and stateful packet inspection. Access control lists can be used to define traffic that is to be permitted or denied into or out of a network. ACLs are extremely flexible configuration parameters that can filter network traffic based on source and destination IP addressing information, port number, and layer 3 protocol. ACLs can be applied to entire subnets, thus permitting or denying all hosts on source or destination subnets, or they can be applied to a single IP address, which would allow or disallow traffic to or from that specific IP address. ACLs are very common security countermeasures that can be applied to both routers and firewalls. So in our graphic, if we wish to block all IP-based traffic originating from network A from accessing network B, which is a very general rule, we could easily do so with ACLs. Additionally, we could block traffic from any individual PC on network A from accessing any specific service on network C's server. This is a very specific rule that can be accomplished through using ACLs. Another technology used in firewalls is stateful packet inspection. Stateful packet inspection allows firewalls to log and monitor the multiple conversations that may be occurring between hosts on internal and external networks. In this graphic, a host on the internal network establishes communication with the server. As the communication is established, the firewall enters a record of the communication into its database. When the server responds to the client, the firewall consults its database and sees that the communication from the server is a response to a prior request and allows that traffic to enter. However, when an outside host tries to access the internal host, the firewall does not have that conversation in its database and thus denies access. The final two types of security measures that we present are intrusion detection systems or IDSs and intrusion prevention systems, or IPSs. Although their names are similar, the key to understanding their operation is in knowing how they respond to network threats. Each of these systems listens to network traffic and then responds differently to incidences that are detected on the network. Intrusion detection systems passively listen to network traffic and react to attacks after they occur. 
After an attack is sensed, the intrusion detection system can actively reconfigure firewalls and routers in order to prevent future attacks of the same type. Although future attacks of the same type are blocked, the initial attack will reach its intended destination inside the network and must be dealt with appropriately by the networking team. Unlike intrusion detection systems, which only passively listen to network traffic and react to situations, intrusion prevention systems actively listen to network traffic and respond to attacks in real time. An IPS can block real-time suspicious traffic as well as future attacks of the same type. Therefore, when comparing intrusion systems, detection systems are reactive and prevention systems are proactive. Security is one of the most dynamic and quickly evolving areas of networking. It is important that you are aware of the measures that are available to both customers and ISPs to make your networks as secure as possible. Although fully understanding available security measures and the many types of attacks present today requires years of experience and study, the information presented in this video will provide a solid introduction of the many tools available to network engineers today.